Now let's look at the annotation. The Act Transactional annotation is metadata that specifies an interface class or method must have transactional semantics. For example, start a brand new read-only transaction when this method is invoked, suspending any existing transaction. There are quite a few settings that can be applied to this annotation. This table from the documentation lists all of them. First, there is value, which specifies the transaction manager to be used. Then there is propagation. These are the transaction propagation behaviors defined by the propagation ENA. Let's look at a couple of them. First, the default one, which is required. Supports a current transaction, creates a new one if none exists. If there is a transaction already started, then this method will execute within that. Otherwise, a new one will be created. Requires new. Creates a new transaction and suspend the current transaction if one exists. The next attribute I want to look at is read-only, which is a boolean. What happens when the read-only attribute is set to true? The default is false, by the way. Spring doesn't handle persistence, so it cannot define exactly what read-only should do. So this is just a hint to the provider, which in this case is Hibernate. According to the documentation, if using Hibernate as the JPA provider, when read-only flag is set to true, flash mode on the Hibernate session will be set to never, preventing any changes to data. Following is an excerpt from the Spring Data documentation which states this. It's definitely reasonable to use transactions for read-only queries and we can mark them as such by setting the read-only flag. This will not, however, act as check that you do not trigger a manipulating query. Although some databases reject insert and update statements inside a read-only transaction, the read-only flag instead is propagated as hint to the underlying JDBC driver for performance optimizations. Furthermore, Spring will perform some optimizations on the underlying JPA provider. Example, when used with Hibernate, the flash mode is set to never when you configure a transaction as read-only, which causes Hibernate to skip dirty checks, a noticeable improvement on large objectories. Next is timeout, in which you can give the number of seconds before timeout. And then there is rollback4, which is an array of classes extending from throwable. These are the exceptions that must cause a rollback. The rest of the attributes are rollback4 class name, no rollback4, no rollback4 class name, for which you can take a look if you want to use them. Spring Transaction Management also supports the at transactional annotation from Java as a drop-in replacement for the at transactional annotation provided by Spring. But it lacks some of the settings available in the one from Spring such as read-only and timeout, which are quite useful. So I would use the Spring's transactional annotation instead of the one from Java.